three-time champ, decade in the league, 15 years in the league exactly with nine teams, 14 actually. Steve Kerr and Eric Spolstra had him as coaches. Sean Livingston, the three-time champ, is joining us. So um, when did you know, because you were in the front office with the Warriors, when did you know and Bob Myers know you're watching Jokic and you're like, all right, this is something. <laughs> this guy is a handful. Was it year? Because I remember year one, the numbers are small. Year two, like when did you guys know in the front office of the Warriors, whoa, this is a this is a tough matchup? Yeah, I think going back to my playing years, uh, my last year, uh, 2018, 2019, uh, you could see the growth. Uh, this guy's coming. Uh, he's a low down low, and he's unselfish by nature. And that's a really dangerous combination uh, because you can really play off of him. You can play off of him at the high post, the low post. I mean, he's just such a, a dangerous weapon. Uh, and so I, I got a chance to see that early on as a player. And then obviously he got better and better uh, in the bubble series, you know, going back to 1920. Um, you know, it just continues just to get better and better throughout the playoffs uh, as stars do. The Warriors have always been a team where high IQ guys, uh, Steph and Wiggins and Draymond, they're, they're, this is a catch and react offense. You got, that's why it's hard for young players. And I watched Zion and I watched John Morant and some of their missteps. And I think to myself, the basketball culture worries me. In football, there's no AAU, hard high school coach, hard college coach, college for four years. They're not only building a football player, they're building a man. Half the league is undrafted. A lot of the players come in married or quickly mm -hmm. get married. The careers are shorter. Do you worry that the basketball culture is getting kids into the league, Sean, really fast, putting unbelievable run-the-franchise pressure on them, and like all of us at 18, 19, it's just too much. Well, as somebody that came in the NBA uh, as an 18-year-old, uh, I think I have a unique you know, perspective on that. Uh, and it's a lot. It is. Um, you know, there's a lot of responsibility. Uh, there's a lot of people, you know, a lot of new people, a lot of new faces. Yeah. Uh, the travel, you know, the season. You know, it, it is a lot for, um, you know, any rookie. To, to handle, even going through four years, uh, you know, I've seen rookies, you know, come out and, and struggle with the adjustments needed, you know, to be a professional. So, uh, yes, to answer your question, it is a lot for any 18 to 19 year old. But at the same time, you know, this is where the trends are going. Uh, you look at all the other sports, um, you know, athletes are able to declare and, you know, monetize their talents early. Um, you see what college is now doing in order to combat that and try to compete a little bit with the NIL and, um, you know, the NBA as well. I think you'll see, you know, kids continue to come out at an early age, whether it's one year, whether it's uh, going to the G League overseas, uh, just different portals and outlets uh, to get to the NBA, because I think ultimately that's, you know, the destination for the top tier athletes. Sean, it's interesting. Giannis, Jokic, uh, Victor Wembanyama. I've said before, um, the international players often play against men when they're 16. When they come to the States, it is interesting. I just was, I went to Iceland with my son, and I, I told my son, whenever I go to a foreign country, I feel like I'm more polite, I tip better, I'm a visitor. And sometimes international players come here. They're loyal, they're loyal to Denver, they're loyal to Milwaukee. They, they're like, hey, I'm not from here, I'm a visitor. And the, there's, there is something about international players. They feel very mature. I sense that as a viewer. I mean, maybe I'm wrong on this, but do you see it, the international player? It's kind of a different sensibility when they come to the States and play. It definitely is. That's a good point. And, um, you know, as a player that's had international teammates uh, throughout, you know, my career, um, there was definitely a unique perspective that they had. Um, you know, just, you know, in, in the terms of, uh, their careers, their responsibilities that they had to carry at such a young age. Uh, some of these guys have been playing pro since 13, 14 years old. I mean, that's that's a you know that's just a different uh, set of circumstances that you know kids over here are you know they're they're still in school, they're still being a kid. Uh, so I think there's a, a bigger hill to climb in terms of adapting 
you know, to the league over here, uh, you know, especially for young uh, players in the U.S. I think overseas, I think they have an advantage, you know, playing against, you know, playing against adults, playing against older competition. Yeah. And then you look at them and they've been playing already for four or five years <laughs> pro and they come over here, you know, they, they kind of have a leg up. Yeah. So, um, I, there's a lot of stuff. The NBA, we have a draft in a week. Victor Wembanyama will come into the league. We've got already rumors today on Zion and Bradley Beal and everybody's moving. I made this point that if you take LeBron out, people say, well, you know, mobility, you know, LeBron bounces around and wins. And I said, okay, that's LeBron. The Warriors won pre-KD, during KD, post-KD, okay? The truth is it's like saying I don't have to go to college because Steve Jobs didn't. Yeah, there's one Steve Jobs. I'm not it. So the one thing I think this league, it's underrated. Russell, MJ, Bird, Magic, Steph, Duncan, Akeem, staying with your team. And the Warriors are going through a transition, and they've said, we're keeping our guys. We're keeping Clay. We're keeping Steph. We're keeping Draymond. We're keeping our core. You tell me. And, and I, think the, I think the advantage to that, Sean, is you get um, you can work through struggles. You're like a family. You've been through arguments like you, the term, you're not, a, you're not honeymooners. Like you're not right. Like you've been through bad moments. You tell me you were on nine teams, the value of being patient, the downside to mobility. Cause I, I watch all these LeBron arguments and I'm like, he's one one The dynasties all come from like patience. That's right. And he also brings a different set of circumstances you know, just with his brand, his name, uh, you know, there's there's added pressure wherever he goes, um, you know, media scrutiny. Uh, but it, you just don't see it in today's age. Uh, players, you know, staying with their teams, uh, keeping a team together. The collective bargaining agreement, you know, continues to change. Uh, so teams have to continue, continue to change, continue to adapt uh, with the rules. Um, but you look at a team like the Spurs, what they were able to accomplish, keeping those three guys together and Duncan. Uh, Ginobili uh, and Parker. I mean, it's, you know, it, it's an incredible uh, feat. It's very hard to do. I think it takes humility. Um, you know, there is something about a life cycle of a team, I believe, within five to six years. Uh, you know, it kind of starts to, you know, some of those things start to erode. Uh, you, you see some of the same faces, which is great, but it, it takes personalities to mesh. Um, you know, so there's pros and cons to it, but I mean, you look at what the Warriors have been able to accomplish. Uh, you look at those three guys, starting with Steph. Uh, he has the personality, um, you know, to create that type of environment where, you know, he can stay on a team for 20 years because, uh, you know, he's an even better human being than he is a basketball player. And, you know, teammates will want to play with them. And Golden State's a great place to play uh, and a great market where they can attract some free agents as well. By the way, you committed to Duke, then went high school to the pros. Uh, most of these guys either go one year or, or you know, they the NBA would prefer their scouts don't hang out at high school games. They don't want any of that nonsense. <laughs> but it, it is. Do you remember your first year as a pro? What was the, give me the single thing where you were like overwhelmed? Oh, I think uh, seeing Shaq for the first time <laughs> <laughs> in person was like. Human beings shouldn't be this big. Like, you know, that, that, that for me was, uh, you know, that, that was, you know, mind boggling. But I think, um, you know, my first welcome to the NBA moment was uh, guarding Joe Johnson. Uh, and I told this story before, um, you know, it was a preseason game um, in the middle of October. And, you know, I was matched up against Joe Johnson. I had never heard of him before. This was kind of my first uh, preseason NBA game. And I was just shocked as far as like, why haven't I heard of this guy, you know? Um, and it was before he had, you know, signed on to Atlanta, signed on to, uh, you know, to Brooklyn and become a superstar and 10 time all-star. But, uh, you know, it, it showed me that there was, you know, valuable players and, and roses throughout the NBA, uh, throughout NBA rosters. By the way, the, the Joe Johnsons and Jeff Greens, they, they got buckets on a lot of people, Sean. There's no I watched Jeff Green getting buckets in the finals. I'm like, that guy's been fifteen years in this league getting buckets on people, man. You play Bruce Bowen was a great defensive player in the NBA. He could get buckets. A lot of these guys decide to become like defensive stoppers because that's the only way they can make the league. 
Joe Johnson scored on everybody. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes, he did. And, uh, you know, he, he didn't discriminate either, big or small. <laughs> you know, I, 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 had a chance, I had a chance to play with him, and I, I still remember, uh, you know, coming out of timeout in Toronto in the playoffs. Was like, I think it was game seven. And I was like, man, what's the play? He said, man, give me the ball and get the hell out the way. <laughs> and I was like, that's, that's, that, the that's the play. That's the play. Yeah, that's the play. Sean Livingston, three-time champ. Great seeing you. Look good as always. Good stuff. Appreciate it, and good luck going forward. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. You bet. Sean Livingston. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.